Hello everyone and welcome to another lecture on software design and architecture. In this lecture we are going to talk about operation contracts in continuation to where we were last time. So we have already discussed use cases domain model and in the last lecture we discussed system sequence diagrams and we discussed how the system sequence diagrams bridge the gap between use cases and the sequence diagrams. Before we jump into the sequence diagrams directly, we are going to describe the operation contracts and afterwards we go down into the design model. So we have already seen the use cases, we talked about the domain model, system sequence diagrams and this system sequence diagram including the domain model are going to be our input for the sequence diagrams which will actually help us uh, get started with our class diagrams so let's get started and uh, if you see our current position in the bigger picture in the context of unified process so this is where we are right now and as we are done with the uh, operation contracts uh, and we are done with describing what are operation contracts how we write the operation contracts and its pros and cons uh, we will jump into the design part where we will actually start with the sequence diagrams but here one thing that you must notice is that uh, interactions and uh, requests that we placed in our system sequence diagram are going to be an input for the sequence diagrams so what is going to happen is that every single request that you made in the system sequence diagram is going to result into single sequence diagram I will explain that when we talk about sequence diagrams uh, but additionally the operation contracts that we are going to discuss now are going to be input in the in the in the form of pre and post conditions so uh, yes exactly in operation contracts we are going to identify what are different uh, preconditions and post conditions for a particular uh, particular operation on the system so to understand more clearly uh, we already know that use cases are the one of the primary mechanism which are used to describe the system behavior and uh, the the behavior is described in pretty much details but sometimes a more detailed description is required and for for that detailed description we actually use uh, the operation contracts and as the operation contracts uh, define and describe the pre and post conditions so we use them and we specify and describe our use cases in in additional details so that we define that what will be the pre and post conditions as a result of the operations that we perform on the system now if we talk about the relationship of domain model and operation contracts we know that domain models are actually the visual representation of conceptual classes of the of the real world object whereas the contracts actually describe the detailed system behavior in terms of state changes to objects in the domain model after a system operation has executed which means that if some operation is executing there would be some change in the state of the object in our domain model so that change in the state is represented and described with the help of the operation contracts and one disclaimer is that that you if you really do not need such details you can keep it agile that means if you want to keep your process fast and quick so you can uh, avoid writing and and uh, adding the operation contracts to your process but if in case you really need some additional detail and understanding of the system uh, you need an additional detail of the use cases you really need to monitor the pre and post conditions very closely then you can go with the operation contracts to start working with the operation contracts we must start looking at the system operations so system operations are actually in in, in invoked as a result of incoming system events so whenever an event occurs 
we call system operation in response. To understand that better, let's have a look at this system sequence diagram that we created earlier. So in this case, uh, the input system events actually invoke the system operation. So for example, the system event enter item invokes a system operation called enter item. And the system event called end sale invokes the system operation called end sale. So whenever an event occurs on a system, as a result, in response to that, we invoke a system operation. And for every system operation like make new sale, enter item ID, and sale and make payment, we can write the system operation contracts. The concept of system operations is same as in object-oriented programming when we say that the message foo invokes some other method in response. So you call a method A and from within that method you call a method B. Now let's just look into the detailed template of how we can write the operations contract. To get started we can have the name of the operation so it says the name and the parameters that we are going to use in that operation. Then for the cross, cross references we can mention uh, the use case that actually is uh, having that particular event mentioned in. And then finally we come to the main point that is called the preconditions and post conditions. So if there are any particular assumptions that we want to mention which must be true before the execution of the operation, we can define them in the precondition. And uh, all the details, in fact, the state of the objects that we are expecting uh, after the completion of the execution, we mention them in the post conditions. So this is a very simple template that we need to follow. And uh, for, every, uh, for every operation in our system, we can, we can write a simple operations contract. And to get started, we can take and look uh, as an example for the operations construct of, of uh, enter item. So the name of the operation that we are using here is enter item. And I'm also passing the parameters along with the name. Uh, the use cases that this, this operations contract appear is in is the process sale use case. Now there is only one precondition for the enter item event to occur and that post uh, precondition is that there must be some sale in progress and as far as the post conditions are con concerned uh, there are a number of post conditions mentioned here uh, including a sales line item instance which is uh, in short abbreviated as SLI was created so whenever there is an item being entered that means that there is a sale line item instance created and we discussed about what is sale line item. The next post condition is that uh, the SLI was associated with the current sale. That means there would be number of sale line items for every different sale but this current sale line item should be associated with the current sale. The quantity of the sale line item should actually become updated. So as soon as you uh, change or enter the quantity of the product, that quantity must also be updated. And then finally, the sale line item must be associated with a product description based on the item ID. So the sale line item, if it has the item called, let's suppose a keyboard, then the a description product description of the keyboard would and must be associated with the uh, with with the sale line item so to look in detail the post conditions describe changes in the state of objects in the domain model and the domain model state changes include instances created uh, they include associations formed or broken or if there are any attributes which have changed. So uh, for example, uh, the quantity attribute has changed. For example, uh, the instance of sale line item is created. So these are actually called the, uh, the, the post conditions. One other post condition that we just discussed about was the description of the product would be associated with the sale line item. 
सो पोस्ट कंडीशन आर एक्चुअली नॉट एक्शन विच आर टू बी परफॉर्म ड्यूरिंग द ऑपरेशन सो प्लीज कीप दिस इन माइंड दैट दे रियली डो नॉट हैव टू डिपेंड अपॉन इनफैक्ट इनफैक्ट दे डू डिपेंड अपॉन द ऑपरेशन बट दे डोंट हैव टू डील डायरेक्टली विद द ऑपरेशन रादर दे आर जस्ट द ऑब्जर्वेशन दैट इन द डोमेन मॉडल the attributes that we have mentioned for every every domain concept or or i can say every domain candidate class the attributes in that domain model would be updated so that's very obvious for example if i am purchasing a book and uh, there is a concept called cart so the total amount total value of the cart would be updated as soon as i add a book to the cart so the the total value is the attribute and the the change in that total value is called the post condition so the better way for writing a post condition like uh, we did for the sale line item could be a sale line item was created instead that, that we write create a sale line item so that means that post conditions are something which are occurring after the execution has completed so that really states that you must write them in the past tense to emphasize that they are observations uh, they are not the operations themselves i told you earlier as well that they are not the operations rather they are the effects of the operation so that's why we are going to write them in the past tense <laughs>